Hello and thank you once again for joining with me for the sixth of our Lenten Reflections. Lent, when we started, seemed quite a journey to go. Forty days, excluding Sundays, to take us to Easter. We have been going through the weeks and the studies and the journey. And it's, it's a special time, as I said at the outset, a special time to help us prepare for the wondrous Easter celebration that is the culmination of this journey of Lent. And it helps to journey before we reach the destination. You know, I'm a great Star Trek fan, like all sorts of science fiction type stuff. And I often think, wouldn't it be great if we had that facility that you could just beam up and beam down? Who would need to waste time walking somewhere where you could just set a destination, press a button and you'd be there almost instantaneously? I used to think that. But then sometimes it's good just to go out for a walk. It's sometimes good just to travel, to see the world, to see people, and rather than just go from point A to point B. I was in Edinburgh last week for a meeting in the, the central offices with the, the church, and I drove down, and I was only thinking of my destination, where I was going to park, and how long the meeting was going to be. And it was only on the way back that I started to see deer in the fields. I started to see other things. I, I got caught up in a traffic jam and I was able to look around for a while at the countryside. Mind you, after 10 minutes in this traffic jam, I was a wee bit fed up looking at the tree, the, the, the fields and, the, and there was sheep in one of them and, and uh, uh, lambs as well until I managed to turn off and, and avoid much of the traffic jam. But sometimes in our destination, we kind of just want to get to the end. I don't remember if I told you, but I recently read a book by Richard Fraser, a minister in the Church of Scotland, account, uh, re recounting his journey of the Camino. It's, it's a walk from France through the, across the border in Spain, the Camino Way, and it reaches the town of Santiago and it's a long walk it's hundreds of kilometers my own colleague Neil from Kintour one of my parish uh, group ministers he and his daughter did the walk last year and much of the book was about the exploit on the way it wasn't just about reaching the goal it started off with Richard Fraser wanting to walk briskly, he was doing it on his own, wanting to walk very briskly, setting at a fast pace. But then much of the book became about the people he met on the way, on the things that he saw, and the experiences he shared. And sometimes in Lent, we tend to focus just on Easter in the distance, but it's getting closer. It's getting so close now, we can almost feel the end of this Lenten journey. And it's good to have this time to prepare ourselves for what lies ahead, to reflect on, oh, it's that sort of, that sort of the cross behind me, to reflect on what Christ has done for me and for you. You know, yesterday I spent some time starting to prepare for the, our Palm Sunday celebration in church. We are having our Sunday school and my Sunday school leader phoned me and says, have you seen the latest video that the Church of Scotland are sharing? It's a Lego version of the Easter story. And there's been a Lego version out for many years, but this is a different, slightly different one. And it's with a Scots voiceover. I don't mean broad Scots, I just mean a Scots accent. And so we're going to be showing this on Sunday. I can't show it to you now because it's not permitted to put it online. But it should be quite a good little story to tell the whole journey of Holy Week. I'm looking at orders of service and choice of hymns. And I was, as I do, not just sit with my hymn book and know exactly where I'm going. I look on websites and other things to get ideas. And I came upon this hymn. It's a hymn that I've never uh, sung before, I've never heard of before, never looked at the words before. 
It's more about the journey of Lent than about Easter. And it's, it's a wonderful hymn. And I thought to myself, rather than reading you a passage of scripture today, I'd read this, this hymn. It was written by a person called Joy Dine, who died in 2001. And her, I'm guessing, brother, relative, I don't know, the Reverend Mervyn Dine copyrighted it. And it says, God who sets us on a journey. So I'm just going to read it to you. I'm not going to sing it. It is a four verse hymn, but I'm just going to read it to you. God who sets us on a journey to discover, dream and grow. Lead us as you led your people in the desert long ago. Journey inward, journey outward. Stir the spirit, stretch the mind. Love for God and self and neighbour marks the way that Christ defined. Exploration brings new insights, changes choices we must face. Give us wisdom in deciding, mindful always of your grace. Should we stumble, lose our bearings, find it hard to know what's right, we regain our true direction focused on the Jesus light. End the longing for the old days, grant the vision that we lack. Once we started on this journey, there can be no turning back. Let us travel light, discarding excess baggage from our past. Cherish only what's essential, choosing treasure that will last. When we set up camp and settle, to avoid love's risk and pain, you disturb complacent comfort, pull the tent pegs up again. Keep us travelling in the knowledge. You are always at our side. Give us courage for the journey. Christ our goal and Christ our guide. I find these words really quite comforting. End our longing for the old days. Grant us vision that we lack. Once we've started on this journey, there can be no turning back. And then it says, keep us traveling in the knowledge. You are always at our side. Give us courage for the journey. Christ our goal and Christ our guide. On this Lenten journey, our goal is to think about and prepare ourselves for celebrating Easter. To get ourselves in the right frame of mind to acknowledge what Christ has done for me and for you. But let us remember in this journey that it's not just about the destination. It's about knowing that on this journey we are learning, we are caring, we are loving, we are sharing. And that all of this journey we're not walking alone. That Christ is with us. Christ our goal and Christ our guide. May you be guided and may you know that Christ is with you wherever you travel. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. And thanks again, once thanks you for joining with me once again.